This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and we are back with episode two of our five-part series with Shahan, coffee scientist. Uh, and we are talking about in this episode how research is elevating specialty coffee as an industry. So Shahan, what are your thoughts about that? Yes. So when you talk about industry, you have to talk about profitability, mm-hmm. about money, you are, you are doing something in order to have a return, economic return. Whereas if you talk just about the specialty coffee movement, you know, these nerds or these uh, passionate people, they don't do it for money. They don't do it for money. They do it for, for the love of coffee and they don't earn much. But if you, go, if you move to industry, then these are, of course, profit-driven organizations. Mm-hmm. And the... the and very intelligent people, you know? So industry is not for me like a negative word, you know? Because industry is actually the place where most of the innovation is really happening today. I don't think that the specialty coffee movement is that innovative compared to the industry. Today, industry, they have resources, they have money. They, most of the, uh, basically I have, um, what shall I say, I do, Per year, I have a budget of research that is about a million or a little bit more, mm-hmm. and 95% is coming from industry, big industry. Mm-hmm. The specialty coffee movement has hardly any money mm-hmm. to support research. And so the industry is very interested in research as well as in specialty, because of course, specialty is the Formula One of the whole coffee industry. It is what you aspire to, you know, also in your communication. And the industry has started already very early on to realize that innovation is what it needs to make a competitive advantage. In the past, you just took coffee, you roasted, you packed, and you sold. But with that, you're not going to do any competitive advantage. You're not going to do any margins. You're not going to do any business, really. You know, These mm-hmm. people who just do specialty coffee, roasting, packing, and selling, there are so many. There's no margin in it. And um, they are not rich in general, but the industry needs competitive advantage. And competitive advantage requires innovation, requires uh, research. And so the research, when you think about the establishment of capsule systems, for example, Mm -hmm. in uh, the capsule, capsule system has a lot of innovation and research. It has to do with machine technology, with packaging, with distribution channels, this has to be thought through. It has to be um, realized also with degassing. How do I degas my coffee after roasting in order to have the right pressure inside? How do I uh, preserve the quality because a capsule is kept during months? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also then a lot of research in grinding because if you want to be successful and you want to have a product that works with customers and people like, you have you cannot just to work by feeling. It just doesn't work. And so it is actually the industry who has started to study some very, very in detail, the grinding for capsule systems, for example. Packaging, degassing, and they are actually at the forefront because it creates a competitive advantage, it creates margin, and it creates a business. And if you don't do research today, you will not have these margins. You will not have uh, a business today. So um, that's why even people who do just roasting and packaging and sell whole beans, even these companies come to us to study the degassing or the uh, barrier properties of their packaging materials or the sustainability of their packaging materials or conditions how to store the whole beans in order to have the best quality in the, or also um, how to store it as a primary product or then as a secondary. And secondary is for us, once you open the bag and it's being used in the, in the home, we did also research for companies how to best store open coffee. But these are big industry because they want to make a difference and it makes a margin. So today, industry is, in my opinion, the driver and the leader 
in research because they not only do they they have money to pay for research, but it is important for their margin for the competitive advantage. So industry is driving research and mm -hmm. specialty coffee is profiting from this research. What is specialty coffee? How are you defining specialty coffee? Well, as I said, originally, these were artisan craft people who worked out of passion. But at some point, passion hits a wall, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to bring in knowledge, study, science. And a lot of people now in the specialty movement are doing that. So the specialty coffee is in a transition from a craft to a scientific approach to high quality. The, sci the specialty coffee people are people, in my opinion, who are chasing the perfect cup of coffee. So they are doing everything that elevates the quality in the cup. And that's what these people want. Now, they also talk more and more about sustainability and ethical aspect, mm -hmm. which is not directly affecting your cup, but it is part of the specialty movement to be uh, responsible for the whole value chain, which is also now part of the industry, of course, your industry. But in the, I would say in the specialty coffee movement, it is a very honest, a very real concern. They are really connected to the origin country, to farmers. The industry, perhaps it depends, you know, you have different people in the mm -hmm. industry. It's not like black and white. Um, it's also, of course, a marketing element in their approach because customers care. And I think that the specialty coffee movement today is really heading the movement also towards sustainability, towards honest sustainability, no more only the quality and not only the experience. They have taken also non-tangible factors of the value chain as something important, not only things that you would be able to taste in the cup. The specialty coffee has become much more educated, but they really focus exclusively on quality and not on, say, um, um, efficiency, process efficiency, you know, or, uh, or other uh, industrial aspect, you know, how you can simplify workflows, mm -hmm. how you can improve your, um, your, your processes. Industry had also, also to always think about efficiency, efficacy, cost cutting. So the especially woman is really focusing on, on, on pure benefits, which is quality cup experience and sustainability, whereas the industry integrates many other things which are affecting the margins. Do you have a sense that as the industry shifts on many levels because of economic constraints that are happening right now and will continue to happen into the at least the near future, the next couple of years, that the specialty coffee industry or movement, whichever, uh, is going to converge with the approach that bigger industry has. And let's say, for example, if we look at the labor shortage that we're experiencing, we're going to be forced into looking at how, uh, let's say, a company like McCafe approaches yeah. automation in order to, let's say, compensate for, I think, is a permanent labor shortage in our industry. Do you believe that yes. science is going to have to play that role for the specialty coffee industry as well? Yes, yes, yes. There's a, in many aspects of, of coffee and coffee rate to quality, um, um, the size of the operation is important. So mm. uh, we often talk about artisan roasting, small roasters, but and then if you talk about industrial roasts who roast on a huge roaster, there's some kind of a, uh, thinking that that's not good, you know. And often, if you do, say, for example, brewing, automated brewing techniques mm -hmm. or fully automatic coffee machines, they are, of course, automatic. But if you master this automation, you're going to reach a much higher consistency and quality over time. What we are not good at that today, we do not... We do not master the automation properly. Mm -hmm. But of course, the artisan and the manual, also the story of hand picking versus machine picking, you know, there's this, this dream that hand picking is such a great thing, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of big companies also advertise their coffee. This has been all hand picked and not yep. uh, mechanically. But today, you can actually mechanically pick quite well and then have huge technologies. 
to sort, which is much better than the sorting, mechanical sorting sometimes, than the person who is sorting by hand. So automation and large scale operations will at some point be uh, driving necessary. Oh, yeah, driving necessary. Quality. Actually, they will actually be because the automation with the sensor technologies and the consistency will actually be uh, um, con will will assure quality. And the difference between artisan and automated will will be smaller and smaller, in my opinion. But we're not there today. The artisan and the hand work and all this work is still doing a difference because, of course, of huge attention which in the automation right now we cannot have. Mm -hmm. This is also a little bit due because due to the fact that coffee is a small industry in terms of if you talk about fully automatic coffee machines and you compare it to say, to the car industry, oh, we right. cannot invest that much research. We're investing so little research. Whereas the people working in the car industry, they can actually spend billions and billions to develop one simple sensor, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's why um, we don't have the tools because we don't have the budget. We don't have the research. So, whereas, um, so we are actually more and more taking things that have been developed for the aviation industry or for the car industry and trying to use it in the coffee machine industry as sensors, as control systems. Um, and, um, but I believe that, um, over the time automation will be very good. You have the same thing in chess playing, you know? Uh, you play against a computer, and suddenly the computer is better than you. And um, that will be a change, a paradigm change in the coffee industry. Mm -hmm. And the role of the human will change a little bit when it comes to quality and consistency. But when it comes to service, that will stay. So, you know, the person will, the atmosphere in a coffee, that, you know, there will be a role for the human, of course, always. And I think that it's going to be important for us to accept that some of this is going to be happen it will happen because of human drive and, you know, we want to drive uh, technology and science and its influence on coffee in one direction, but other parts of it are going to come from necessity and problem solving and we yes. have to figure things out in real time so that we can survive as an industry. Yes. There is, of course, one element. Coffee is not just quality in the cup. It's also an experience. It's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It is a social experience. It is brings people together. Mm -hmm. So, um, there. So it's not only. It's I always call it, it's a mix of science and art. So you always have to keep somehow both. Uh, you cannot transform it to a pure rational experience. Mm -hmm. So um, how that will work out? Because the customer, they don't drink coffee just for the quality. They drink it for the social experience, for the gathering, for the atmosphere. So we will then understand the role of that. We, we somehow push the quality very far. The customer doesn't drink coffee perhaps just for the quality. They drink it because of the social experience of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so there is also a lot of to be discovered there. Also coffee is a place where ideas are generated, you know, around the coffee historically, the coffee mm. place, you know, that's where evolution started. So a coffee has so many, many other roles in a in an industry. The coffee corner is where people innovate. You know, they come together and suddenly ideas come up. So there's also um, coffee place, way many many other roles. You know, in our life, from um, political uh, upcoming, you know, for people who have new ideas, create and innovation. So around the coffee, so much happens. This, this atmosphere and this atmosphere of coffee will also be studied in the future much more. So social and sociological aspect of coffee. Now, we started this episode with you uh, talking about how uh, industry is about profitability. Do you believe that science is going to help smaller businesses in coffee improve their profit margins? Because we know that small businesses in the specialty coffee industry have such razor thin margins. Do you think that science is going to be able to help from that perspective to increase the profitability of small businesses yes. in specialty coffee? Yes. So I'll give you the example of the sensory summit that we're going to have mm -hmm. in two days here, six and seven. The people who come, 
are half of the people who come are from the specialty coffee from the artisan era, you know, if they can afford to come to Sensory Summit. But the science that we're teaching has mostly been financed by big industry. Okay. So in a way, a lot that we know about coffee and we we then in a different format, we we communicate and we educate, especially coffee movement, is of course uh, acquired to research that has been funded and it has not been funded by the special coffee movement. So the big industry is more and more interested in it, but they also drive the education to specialty coffee movement indirectly because the knowledge that we have today is very is very little driven by the specialty coffee movement um, or f- the research. They, they don't have money to fund research yeah. in simple words. And so... Um, there's an interaction, but the industry also wants the specialty coffee to move. So there's a there's an interaction in terms of education that is driven by the bigger companies. In the next episode, we're going to tackle a very interesting question. I think of all of the questions, this is the one I'm the most curious to hear your responses about. And we're going to talk about how science defines good coffee. And uh, I... I I have asked this question, like, what is good coffee for the 20 years that I've been in the industry? So I'm really Mm -hmm. looking forward to hearing uh, the way that you define this in our next episode. Thanks, Shahan. We'll be back with you guys in the next episode to explore what good coffee is. Peace, love, and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.